Okay. Good evening, everyone. I am so happy that you found it not robbery to spend a little bit of time with me this evening. And today we are going to dive into one of my favorite topics. We are going to talk about the ABCs of a financially fit childcare business. So in our talking about a financially fit childcare business, I first wanna make sure we are all correct. So I just launched a polling screen, a polling question on the screen. Can you all see it? Before we get started, before I share any details or information with you about what we consider to be a financially fit childcare business, I ask, is your childcare business financially fit? Do you think you have a financially fit childcare business? Your participation in this poll will come in a lot of use. There is no judgment. No one can see what your answer is. And your answers, you have very few choices. Yes, I have a financially fit childcare business. No, I don't, but I'm working towards it. Or I don't know, maybe I do, maybe I don't. My goal is at the end of this presentation, you will not only know if you have a financially fit childcare business, but you will also have a plan to keep it that way if you do. And if you don't, you'll have a way to move closer towards that direction. So thank you for your particip participation in the poll. And I see some answers coming in and I'm gonna close it in 10 seconds, okay? Eight seconds. Okay, thank you for your participation. And the majority, 49% of us, <clears throat> do not know if we have a financially fit childcare business. There are 37% of us that say no, not yet. So y'all don't see the T and the Y-E-T on the end of that, that's not yet. And then 14% of us says yes. So our goal is to definitely increase that 14%. So before we get started, I think it's only right I tell you who I am for those of you that do not know me. My name is Shanita Jones, I am a certified public accountant. I have two wonderful spoiled children. They are 22, 23, and 16. I've been married to my best friend for the last 15 years, and we've been together full time every single day since the quarantine. <laughs> it's been okay for the most part, but I'm a people person. And I'm happy when outside is able to reopen safely again. I founded Jones Taxes and Financial Services in 2010 originally to help people understand their tax returns and to get every deduction and credit allowable to them. But it wasn't long before I discovered that the tax return is the end of the story. Our help was needed earlier on during the year. So we began to offer accounting, payroll, and other tax related services to help better shape and manage the tax return and more importantly, grow for the business. As I said, I am a certified public accountant and this means I've suffered through victoriously all four parts of the CPA exam, and I can represent my clients before the IRS. I have three degrees in business, so that means I like to spend a lot of time getting behind the numbers and helping people to know their numbers so that they can grow their numbers. Now, what are we gonna to cover today? We are going to cover what is financial fitness? How do I become financially fit. What are fin financials and why do we need them? Do we even need them? What are some of the best financial practices that I should adapt into my business? And we are also going to talk about how do I stay financially fit? Now, I have another question for y'all. Do you have a way to measure and gauge how financially fit your child care business is? Do you have a way to know if you are on track, on par, and if your numbers are healthy? Okay. So I may have forgotten to share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Okay, I see some people saying they cannot see the screen. Okay, great. <laughs> so the poll results are coming in. And once again, we have 68% of the people do not have a way to measure, engage, and know if their business finances are healthy. So 
That answer is not what we want. It's not ideal. We're going to increase that number of people that do know. However, I'm glad that we don't think that our bank account is the only way to measure our financial fitness. So again, I thank you all for your participation. And these are our results. What is financial fitness? If we're not financially fit, we have reduced capacity. We cannot do as many things as we could if we were fit. When we're not at our A game and in our best physical shape and exercise our physical muscles, we get sluggish when we don't exercise. We start to feel weighed down. We miss out on opportunities. We can't ride all the rides at the amusement park. <laughs> We also take years off of our lives. We want to be physically fit and financially fit. Being physically fit will also help us to operate at our best. When you are out of shape, and if you watch one of my favorite shows, My 600 Pound Life on TV, you'll see that those people, they feel trapped. They can't get around by themselves. Or when we're overburdened with high blood pressure, diabetes, and things of that nature, it slows us down and it prevents us at times from doing things that we would like to do. So not being fit reduces our quality of life. Would you agree? When we're financially unfit, guess what? The same thing happens. We don't have access to capital. We can't secure lending or get investors. If our paperwork isn't in order, it can impede our ability to even participate in grant programs. And I've seen people lose funding for not staying in shape, falling behind, and not exercising their financial muscles. The same way fitness works in the physical space, it also works that way in the financial space. But we wanna be fit so we can have a better quality of life and provide for those that depend on us. Now, many of us have families or are looking forward to having a family, or maybe you can recall when you were the young one in your family. You remember that the strong have to protect and provide for the younger or those that aren't able to take care of themselves. As children, we were dependent on our parents or our guardians. Well, your business is taking care of people too. Your business takes care of the communities you serve so that parents can go to work and provide for their children. You're taking care of and educating our children so that they too can grow up and become upstanding members of our community, our future educators and accountants. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, your business is taking care of you and your family. So it's imperative that you are financially fit and we run financially fit childcare businesses. Why? So we can live longer, have a better quality of life, and provide for those that depend on us, including ourselves. So now we're all warmed up, right? This doesn't happen overnight. Just as it is in becoming physically fit and doing physical exercises, your trainer will usually start with a warm up. Guess what, ladies and gents? This was our warm up. So now, let's get fit, shall we? Now that we're warmed up, we can slip into discussing the fitness routine. The first thing I want to clarify is that in the beginning, and even sometimes during the process, that it is a process. Being financially fit isn't always the easiest thing to do, but it doesn't have to be the hardest thing to do with proper guidance. Anyone that comes to America and learns to speak English will tell you that English is perhaps one of the most difficult languages to learn. Well, guess what? Accounting and finance has its own language too. But I'm here to help make it as easy as one, two, three, or ABC. And that's what I'm going to bring you right now. The ABCs of a financially fit childcare business. If anyone has any comments or questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. And there will be some time at the end for me to respond to your messages. And if for any reason we cannot address everything, or if you can't catch the replay, we will get back to you. As a reminder, the replay will be available for 48 hours. 
Okay. The first section of our presentation is brought to you by the letter A. And I had three points for you under the letter A, but the first one is for advice. To have and maintain a financially fit business, you want to have advice before you start, as you go along, and even during your succession planning, whether that plan is to sell or pass it down to someone else. But you don't want just any advice. It doesn't matter, catch this, if the advice is coming from someone who has accomplished what you would like to accomplish if they are not qualified to speak on a subject matter outside of their own situation. For example, I'm gonna make this plain by correlating financial fitness advice once again to physical fitness advice. We may be qualified to speak on instruction given to us by our own nutritionalists, but if I'm trying to lose weight and you're trying to lose weight, what works for me or what is prescribed to me may work wonders for me, but it could be a detriment to your progress. I'm a little bit on the fluffier side of things. So if you're slimmer and you try to follow the same regimen you see me follow, you may very well end up gaining weight instead of your desired goal of losing weight. Why? Because my caloric intake allowance is going to be higher than yours. The same holds true for financial topics such as, and including to, but not limited to, should I be an LLC? Should I be an S Corp, a C Corp, a nonprofit? Should I be on payroll? How much should I pay myself? And what's the proper way for me to pay myself? Should I hire contractors or employees? And are my labor practices even in line with the rules that govern my state? I see these questions more and more every day being asked in general and to the masses. I see lots of well-intentioned people chime in and give correct answers for someone's situation. And it's not necessarily appropriate for the original person that asked the question's situation. Why? Because everyone's situation is unique. We wanna make sure in being financially fit business owners that you're receiving advice from qualified professionals. Who are these professionals? They're your attorneys, they're your consultants, they're your coaches, and of course, your accountants and business strategists. You should be willing to pay for that knowledge and peace of mind of having someone speak directly to your situation who is also familiar with your industry. The childcare industry is very unique. In fact, the IRS has an audit technique guide specifically designed to train their agents on how to effectively audit childcare businesses. If you Google, there is an audit guide that auditors study just to audit childcare businesses. On the same note, I see far too many childcare business owners paying way too much in tax simply because they don't know what they're entitled to deduct and their accountant didn't realize that things are a lot more colorful in the early childhood education space. But please keep in mind, all professionals are not knowledgeable in all things. Let's talk about business formation, for example. I have a short story, but a true story to share with you. One of my clients, we're gonna call her Mrs. X. Mrs. X decided that she wanted to change some things in her business structure. She wanted to bring in other members and she wanted to change from an LLC to a nonprofit. She went to an attorney as her accountant, I advised her that she should try to find an attorney. Oh, I'm freezing. Is it clearing up? Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> she went to an attorney. So as her accountant, I advised her that she should probably try to find an accountant, an attorney familiar with childcare and or at least has some knowledge in it. But Mrs. X didn't do that. She received some advice from one of her friends who owned a business in a completely different industry. She said her attorney was the best to have ever done it. Mrs. Mrs. X went along and she went to her friend's attorney. Turns out the attorney redid the business formation paperwork. We were in agreement here that if she was gonna make this switch that needed to happen, but the attorney was not familiar with childcare. 
nor did he advise her of what becoming a nonprofit meant. The attorney followed protocol, he issued a new EIN. And for those of you that do not know, at least in the state of Pennsylvania, where I'm from, and many other states, if your EIN changes, out goes your license and your quality star ratings, and you'll be forced to start all over again. And y'all know how that weight goes. I see a lot, and, and something else that ended up happening with Mrs. X, she ended up being removed from her nonprofit later because she didn't fully understand what forming a nonprofit organization meant. And I see a lot of questions about structure and formation. You definitely need to seek advice from an attorney to understand the legal ramifications and from an accountant to understand the tax consequences and opportunities. I know that there are some even bloggers out there that may write and tell you what's best for your situation. But remember, we're not all the same. You'll notice that there's always almost a disclaimer reminding you that you should not take the free public advice you receive as advice for your situation, but that you should consult your own professional. Your business is special and you wanna make sure your business is receiving unique and special advice that pertains to your situation. Just to tell y'all what happened with Mrs. X, Mrs. X ended up starting another business down the line. So it didn't end bad. It could have, but it didn't. It's quite possible when we're receiving advice that some dosage and regimen modifications are needed so that your business can perform at its best and you're fully protected. You'll wanna be sure you're seeing the proper specialist to prescribe exactly what you need. Mrs. X didn't realize her first order of business when she went to nonprofit was to go hire her board of directors, AKA her bosses, and they ended up voting her out. And she ended up having a start from the ground up and she's successful today, alive, well, and thriving. And she might even be on this poll. <laughs> she might even be on this um, webinar. Then we're gonna go to the, to the next topic under the letter A. And in case you're wondering, this training is gonna extend all the way through the alphabet, but today we're gonna to go through A through C. Our next word is accountability. So um, I have a question for y'all, make sure y'all still awake. Do you feel you have adequate advice and accountability in accounting in your childcare business? And I gave you the choices, there's four. Maybe you feel you have the advice, you can choose more than one accountability, accounting, and all of the above. So it looks like we, we have a lot of advice. So advice is good. <clears throat> advice is very plentiful. Okay, so I'll share the results to let you see, because it's important that we're able to see what's going on in our industry, what's going on in, with our peers. And it's not a competition thing, it's a collaboration. Collaboration over competition any day. So I'm going to end the poll and share the results. And it seems like most of us feel like we have enough advice. It looks like we could use some support. We may not necessarily have enough accountability. And the least thing that we have is accounting for now. <laughs> So if you want a financially fit business, it's going to take some training. And while you're in training, a big part of what keeps us motivated and successful <clears throat> is accountability. You should be accountable to someone besides yourself. I got another short story about another client. We're going to call her Mrs. Y. <laughs> and Mrs. Y, I call her that because she's always asking why. But that's a good thing. We can all learn a lesson or two from Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y doesn't read her financial reports. She has a partner, but she doesn't share her concerns with her partner. When the business is in trouble, she puts money in from her own pocket, from her retirement to be exact. She gets it from her husband. And when things go wrong, she keeps it to herself. When things look better, she pays herself back most of the time. Mrs. Y's partner, doesn't even fully understand what's going on and that, and that the business is in trouble. And the partner does this because she doesn't like numbers. Mrs. Y is married to Mr. Y. 
And he even doesn't really know what's going on in the financial situation. Mrs. Y is the only one that communicates with her accountant for the checkups and the partner are never ever invited to these meetings by Mrs. Y. When you find yourself feeling the need to hide things in your business from your partner, whether it's a business partner or a life partner, and you were the boss, something may be wrong. I'm not talking about hiding things as in you're a private person and we don't wanna just go around discussing and divulging all our business. No, we wanna exercise wisdom, of course. But I'm talking about the IRS letters that come in and get stashed in the drawer. You know, the ones that we try to pray away? I'm talking about sitting up late at night, wondering where you're gonna find the funds to cover payroll. I'm talking about the situations that have us unable to get a loan from a reputable establishment. So we end up forced to go to what I call the daycare loan mafia and take out loans with astronomical interest rates because there's no other option. Accountability is great for that athlete in training or someone that wants to get in physical shape. And that's why people have gym buddies. That's why back in the day, I used to go to step aerobics and workout classes. It's been a while since I've been there, but trust me, we are really stronger together. This is why Facebook communities and establishments such as CABA, which I'll share with you in a little while, is such a great place where you can meet like-minded individuals. In a little while, I'll tell you more about CABA, the Child Care Accounting and Business Academy, and how it can help build that same type of support for you. But those of us that attend church, think about when someone's missing and you're used to seeing them. Someone will reach out to you. Just like for those, someone will reach out to you. The members will call you and check up on you. And when you hang up, you think about it for a minute. Where was I? What was I doing? Why, why have I not been in attendance? Sometimes one simple phone call can help you get back on track if we've been slipping and sliding. Or sometimes you're going through something and just knowing that someone else has you on their mind and wishing you well can help uplift you. Just as when working out, if you miss a few sessions and your partner calls you, it helps you get your head back in the game. The same thing is true with growing and maintaining a financially fit business. You need an accountability partner. You need to be able to set goals and make sure you're on track for hitting your targets. That's why I believe in the value and importance of having an advisor that also helps you to hold yourself accountable. Your financial accountability partner should be your accountant. They would be your financial coach. As mentioned before, I have three business degrees with a master's in organizational leadership. So we help our clients with whatever the situation calls for to help them build saleable and scalable businesses. It starts with financial fitness. It's also a good idea to have a coach. Coaches help with things such as mindset. They help with things such as marketing, and managing those things on the operational side of the business, most times it works out that both experts are on the same page. Sometimes they're one and the same person. Think about getting started on a new exercise supplement or diet program. The trainer will usually advise you to go get cleared from your doctor first. And then there's times when your doctor tell you to lose weight and then send you to a nutritionist. Same thing happens in business. Your business is a living, breathing organism. And we want to make sure that living, breathing organism is financially fit and healthy. Now to close out the letter A, I'd like to add one more letter to advice and accountability. And that A stands for accounting. I am a certified public accountant. So I would be remiss if I didn't talk to you about the importance of accounting. If I had a dollar, but every conversation I've had during tax season with someone and they were shocked and appalled by how much they owed in tax or how much they actually didn't make, I would have a lot of dollar bills. If you don't have an accounting system in your business, you have no way of tracking your money and knowing what's what. Some things I suggest you look for in the accounting system is one that's electronic. Be able to access it on the go. You want a system that's tried and proven, no new stuff. 
There are many systems out there that try to combine everything. And I won't name any names from enrollment to payroll, bill tracking, time clocks, shop records, CRM, invoicing, and the list goes on. And I've tried a lot of them. And while most of these systems handle the operational pieces very well, they are not made specifically for accounting and producing useful reports. So don't be afraid to use the best solution for the job, even if the software isn't a childcare specific software. In fact, I have not seen one childcare system yet that handles all of the above well and gives you what you need for a sellable, scalable business. Remember, we want our businesses to be saleable. We want somebody to see enough value in it that they would give us money. Not saying you need to sell it. And we want to make it sellable. Now, now see, y'all calling out system names. I said I was going to be good and I wasn't going to call out no names. <laughs> so now we're finished with the letter A. We're going to hop over to the letter B. And our first topic under the letter B, y'all know me, so y'all not surprised. The first letter is but the first word is budgeting. So many people think that budgeting is a dirty word. They think it's a punishment, but budget, your budget is actually a tool. When we're trying to be physically fit, many of us will count calories, calories in, calories out. We count points. We have X on our watches, our cell phones. You know what we're doing when we do that? So y'all do this every day. When you're doing that, you are budgeting. We know if we only have a certain amount of calories we can consume for the day, then we may decide to spread that out so that we're satisfied and never over our limit. Now, in the financial world and budgeting, we know what our ultimate goal is and what we want to reach. We cannot waste money on frivolous things that are not part of the plan. We deviate when necessary. I remember one day I was doing Weight Watchers. I'm going to make it plain for y'all and I was counting points. I discovered that I had enough points to eat one Big Mac and I wouldn't have very many calories left over. I think I had enough to also have all the water and ice I wanted and uh, some spinach and a handful of grapes. That was all I could have, you know why? Because people pay for what they value and they value what they pay for. My calories were my cash. It was the currency I had that I could use to earn the right to eat what I wanted. I chose what to spend my calories on. Same thing with your business. Budgeting will help you to grow, to get over hurdles. Budgeting will even help you to increase your enrollment when done wisely. When you're properly budgeting, you will understand who you need to enroll, which messages you need to send, who you need to be following up with, which mediums of communication for advertisement have the greatest return on your investment? Budgeting will also help you plan for these trainers, programs, and accountants that will give you the greatest impact. But budgeting isn't all about writing some numbers on a sheet of paper or keying them into a fancy spreadsheet. Budgeting is about making a plan and then going back later and comparing your plan to your actual performance comparing what you actually budgeted for. The difference that you see is called variance. That's your variance. And this information provides insight that's useful to helping you get to your next. So this, folks, is why I preach budgeting. I have another word that begins with the letter B. All right, it's really two words because I couldn't find one word that did the term justice. And that word is business-mindedness. Business-minded. It's not a bad thing to be business-minded. Entrepreneurs, CEOs, financially fit childcare businesses understand they are childcare businesses, but you are a business first. We're not just childcare business owners or business owners when it comes time to enforce a policy or demand payment for services rendered. We understand that if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense, dot, dot, dot all the time. Being business-minded says, yes, I would like these new things from my center from Lakeshore or Amazon, or I would like to buy some new furniture just because I'm tired of my same setup, but it's not in the budget right now. Or better yet, 
Let me go look at my budget and my year-to-date financials and see when and how this can fit into the budget without cutting anything else out. Excuse me. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't make sense for me to buy everything brand new. Another thing we do is we give away too much for free. And giving away, how do we do that? If you've ever had a budget discussion with me, I may have mentioned the E word to you, profit erosion. Thank y'all for praying with me. This is my first day out the bed in a week. <laughs> um, I talk about profit erosion a lot. Erosion basically means to eat things up or to deteriorate. How do we erode our profit? Easy. I won't collect my copay. If you decide that, let's say that copay is $25 a week, 52 weeks in a year, that's $1,300 for however many parents and families we're going to do this for. It's not a lot of money, but $1,300 can go towards increasing enrollment or marketing. It can go towards expansion, the building fund. It can also help you pay down debt, save on interest. Maybe you want to paint the outside of your center. Maybe you want to invest in legal or accounting advice. Maybe you want to go on a vacation. Maybe you want that new bag. We want to be business-minded. We still want to be sympathetic and empathetic towards those that we help. But everyone is not a charity case. If you add up all those co-payments from everyone that owes, think about how much you lose if you waived it for everyone. For those of us, they do accept subsidies or vouchers with that portion. And a lot of states have pulsed that right now, or strongly suggested that we pulse it right now. But you went into business for the love of it. Yes, you went into business because there was a need, but do you know what else there's a need for? You have a need, you have a right, you deserve to be financially fit. And now we're gonna talk about our third day. Another word that y'all probably are surprised that I don't see is a bad word. And that word is borrowing. Why not use someone else's money to make more money for yourself? The wealthiest of the wealthy will have a business line of credit. They'll have loans, a bunch of cash in the bank. Cash is king. You don't want to wait until you get into a jam to decide to borrow when your back is against the wall. Now, just because the cash will be there, that does not mean you need to spend that money. Consider keeping it in an interest-bearing account until the time arises to spend it. Ideally, a savings account with no debit card. And our borrowing of loans, lines of credit, and credit cards, we're also going to be sure that we're making timely payments. Set up automatic payments whenever possible, especially if it's already in a dedicated account. Set it and forget it and make sure it's included in your budget so you don't spend money that's already spoken for. I see a whole lot of talk about business credit. I want to tell y'all something. For everyone that's received idle and PPP loans, you now have that highly coveted DUNS number. You now have business credit history. Before you go taking drastic measures to get it, consider apply for a business credit card at your own bank. Consider applying for a credit card at your favorite store, a store charge card in the company's name. Amazon, we love Amazon anyway, Staples. Even better if your card will give you points because if you can earn points, you can now use those points to travel to attend conferences, trainings, where you can learn more about building your business. You wanna make sure you have access to tap into cash. With everything that's been going on the last couple years, we have learned that we must always be ready for the unexpected. A wise boy when David meets man, meets man, said, and I loved it when he said this, he said, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You want to be in position where you can borrow. Don't go out of control with the borrowing, but you want to improve the quality of your program, expand more hire more qualified teachers, get additional training, bring in specialists, or offer benefits. These things will only make you more money, but you still need the initial cash outflow to get these things started. 
And if the only cash you have to spend is the cash you have for operations, it's just not sustainable for the long term. Now we're going to talk about the letter C. And C is all about cash. Financially fit businesses, you know, they have some meat on their bones. Financially fit people and physically fit people, they have a certain body mass index and they only have so much fat, but they do have fat. Financially fit businesses likewise need to have some meat. You know what your meat is? Your meat is your cash. Hear me when I say this, cash is income. Just because you didn't get a 1099 miscellaneous or a 1099 NEC for cash you receive at the end of the year, and no one's giving it to you on a W-2, or you may not even have a W-2, know that those cash payments you collected, that is income. Financially fit businesses are profitable businesses, or if you just started out and you haven't broken even and turned the profit yet, financially fit businesses at least show the potential to be profitable. You will not show the potential to be profitable if all the cash you receive goes to your hands, to some undisclosed location, never to be recorded, never to be deposited, just poof, disappeared. Co-payments are also income, even if it doesn't make it into the business bank account, but it should. We should be on electronic and automatic payments at this point anyway. And it comes back to borrowing power. You know who gets loans the fastest? People that already have money. So let us not forget or omit about this cash if we've been doing it. If you go get a loan for a car, a building, or you even asking to buy a home for yourself and you need to show your income, you might know you're running a six, seven, eight figure business, but that's not what your tax return says. That's not what your profit and loss says. You don't want to get denied because your income is too low on paper and it doesn't reflect your economic reality. If you are running a six or seven figure childcare business and you never have to pay any tax at the end of the year, you may want to look into that. Because everyone's situation is different, I can't say that something is amiss here, but I will say you want to understand why this is the case. I don't want anyone to pay any more taxes than they're legally obligated to, but we must be careful and think about our long-term goals and plans while we're being aggressive with our tax strategies. So if you haven't been able to get funding and the financial statements are staying in your, standing in your way, we can certainly help with that. Before I go into my favorite C word to talk about, I want to ask y'all what your thoughts on commingling are first. Do you believe that co-mingling can hurt your business? And it's okay if you don't believe so. And if you do not know what co-mingling is, I will tell you what it is. <coughs> I was doing good. <laughs> wow, 93% of our voters believe that co-mingling can hurt their businesses. So we still have some answers coming in. Co-mingling, what is co-mingling? Co-mingling is the mixation. <laughs> it is the entanglement, as one of our members of the Facebook group said, of your personal funds, doing personal things in your business account, doing business things in your personal account. And it's even doing things from business one into business two's account. When you're mixing funds together from other places that don't go together, that is co-mingling. So the question is, do you believe that this can hurt your business? Okay, I'm going in the poll and share the results with you. So we know, we know, 90% <clears throat> of us know. Now for the 5% that say no, I'm gonna see if I can convince you in the next couple of minutes. If I can't, that's okay, but I tried. And for those that don't think it matters, you're kind of on the fence, Maybe you'll sway either way at the end. Commingling is our third word and one of my favorite topics. Financially fit businesses do not commingle. <clears throat> Think about healthy people that tend to be physically fit. 
they don't mix and match their diets. Financially fit people, healthy people, they don't typically eat solid on Monday and then the rest of the week they eat in pizza, fried chicken, potatoes, and all the bread they want because they understand that this behavior is not conducive to them continuing to remain at their optimal capacity for peak performance. It could jeopardize their fitness. Did y'all catch that? When you get to co-mingling cash, you're mixing your business and personal funds or you're mixing funds from business one and business two. <clears throat> for our purposes, a business is counted as one EIN number. So just because you own ABC Childcare and 123 Academy, doesn't mean because it's all business and it all belongs to you that we should just mix it all together. Co-mangling taints the true picture of your business and how it's really performing. <clears throat> we lose visibility of what our real expenses are and what our real income is. To be financially fit, you have to get on the scale. To be, you have to get on the scale and weigh yourself and see where you weigh in, just like in physical life. You can't see where you weigh in if you're moving around too much when you get on a scale because the scale can't register your numbers. That's how it is with co-mingling. Now, the third C, now, we never ask anyone, I'm going to go back to co-mingling for a hot second. <clears throat> we never ask anyone to stop co-mingling without helping them devise and develop a plan to eliminate it. Um, as a reminder, the Q&A, feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A and we will answer them for you. Um, the third C we're going to go to is coaching. Yes, it's best if you can have a formalized coaching relationship, but you need a coach to make sure your business is flowing smoothly. This is where business and financial coaching gives us a competitive edge. We have to be careful of that scarcity and poverty-rooted mind blocks to try to sneak in and creep up on it. We have to put those things away. We must not be afraid to go to our next level because we don't know if we can stay there. Looking outwardly healthy, but meanwhile we have IRS notices, state notices, city notices, past due notices, bounce checks, overdraft fees, but we looking real good in the photo shoot. That's the equivalent of when I, I'm talking about myself, put on girdles and shapers and spanks, but eventually you have to take it off and breathe. Mask off with your business. So as I come to a close, maybe you are not running the most financially fit childcare business. Maybe you aren't sure and you think you might possibly be. You may have made a bunch of mistakes yesterday before and all things in the, in the past, but it starts one step at a time. Myself and my team have been proudly, affectionately called the accountants that care because we follow our simple care method. And I'll tell you about our care method in a second, but I do have one final polling question for you all. Did you learn anything new or gain a different perspective about anything that we discussed this evening? And in my prayer, my hope is that you did. <clears throat> that's awesome. That's awesome. That's, that's why we do it. <laughs> so I'm going to close the poll shortly. <clears throat> okay. So that's a blessing. 96% of us learned something. 4% of us didn't. So maybe we teach you something next time. So. When I talk about our care method, we know some people may be nervous, curious, or even intimidated by working with accountants. We're regular people just like you. And several of us own child care centers, invest in them, or have spent time working in child care centers, and we even have school teachers. We believe in education and also that people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And we don't want to see anyone perish due to financial knowledge. In fact, we want to help child care business owners we work with to flourish and thrive financially in their businesses. And this is how we do that under our care method. The first thing we do is we have a conversation with you, just like we're doing now. 
We want to understand where you are in your business, where you would like to go, and then we help you to reach your destination. That's the C, conversation. The A, we analyze your entire account in the tax situation. R, we review our findings with you in our proposed regimen, and we help you come up with a routine to help you get financially fit and stay that way. And the final step, the letter E, we engage with you and educate you to help you change the nations. That's what you're doing, but you can't do that if you're out of shape or you don't have the resources. You can't do that if you don't know how well you're performing or if you're at your peak or if you need more endurance or maybe just a little bit of conditioning and training support. Jones Taxes and Financial Services is a full service accounting firm which specializes in accounting and tax preparation and profit strategies for childcare business owners. So for today's participants, we are going to open for a limited time only. We are going to open the door for our founders, for serious childcare business owners that are ready to run their childcare empire as the profitable, scalable business that it should be, all while avoiding stress, uncertainty, and money drop. We're introducing CABA, the Child Care Accounting and Business Academy, and I am so elated to do so. This is the only business program created specifically for child care business owners that will help you to reduce overwhelm, give you step-by-step -step guidance on how to shift your business to meet your goals, and help you implement business systems that will make working on your business easy. This is not some course that you'll never open again once you purchase it. In fact, it's not a course. This is a done with you 12 month program to make sure you learn as you go and apply what you learn. Now, I know you don't have the time to go get an MBA. I have one. My team has one. Our accounting manager has a couple of them. <laughs> That's why we'll teach you all the skills you need and do it gradually. So once you graduate, from the Child Care Business Accounting Academy, you'll have a box of tools and skills at your fingertips. Once you become a founding member, you'll have immediate access to our group coaching calls. It has a value of 6K. We'll have weekly open office hours. There'll be live training with special guests. There's private VIP member chat, personal membership, the Moneymaker Mastermind Network, proven bookkeeping and accounting processes. And then we're gonna do four one-on-one -on -one business deep dives with you over the course of that year. If we were to tally all of this up, it would come at a cost of $48,000. This would also be the cost for you to hire a full-time person in your organization that would probably just handle the accounting part of it. And our exclusive offer for founders only for today's participants, you will get all of this, and the price ain't 48 grand for $12,000. That's it. So if you are interested, we will drop the link for you and you'll be able to sign up. We will keep the car open a limited time. We are not looking for a big group our first go around. It's gonna be very intimate and we wanna dive really deep for our founders. That's why I said the founder founding rate today. So we will drop the link in the, um, chat box for you all. Now, meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed to the next slide. Looking for my... So I know we unpacked a lot of material today. It's our hope that you found something useful to help you continue your financial health, growth, and success. If your business is not fiscally fit, we hope that we helped you at least think about getting started on your path to financial health. And is there anyone here, if you have not downloaded a copy of our old ebook, the new one is out, we will make sure you get those links in the email you registered. So we have your email, we'll be sure you get it. So let's go and we'll proceed and I'll address some of the questions that we may have here in the question box.
and I don't know where my face went. So a lot of the specific questions that we have um, regarding the, the questions that I'm seeing specifically about your accounting, I wanna be responsible. So I'm not gonna give blanket answers because everyone's situation is different. So I don't, so I don't know, but we definitely can speak, um, we definitely can speak separately if you're interested in scheduling the consultation and we can get you specifically answers. How can I help people that really don't do well with this? It seems like second nature to me, but others is like a foreign language. Caprice, I'm not good at anything artistic or graphically designed um, that involves anything graphically. So anything that I'm not good at or will take too much of my time or is not a good use of my time, um, I outsource it. There are other things that I am good at, but just because I'm good at it, it's not the best use of my time. So I don't spend my time doing those things. I have other people do it. Um, Alicia says, you're, we're always told to write off everything pertaining to childcare, which makes our income go down. So how much should we actually write off where it does not affect us when applying for loans or credit and show what we make? Well, that's going to depend on a lot of things. What kind of childcare do we have? Are we home? Are we center? Are we multiple locations? What are our, what's our business structure? How are we paying ourselves? What are these things we're writing off? What are our long-term goals? If the person doing it, doing your taxes, if you're only working with them at the time of the year when you're doing your taxes and their main goal is to get you the lowest tax deduction and they're not a part of your financial overall plan, then yeah, they probably would give you the advice to write everything off. But if you have a relationship with your financial professional, that's where you'll be able to devise a plan. Maybe certain things shouldn't be written off fully Maybe to keep things in line with your plan, you'll depreciate things. Um, on the same note, I would never tell anyone not to write anything off just so that their income could be higher because that is also um, illegal and you can get in a lot of trouble for that too. Um, when starting a nonprofit, can family members be on your board? Family members can be on your board. There are specific rules governing to the extent and what they're able to do on your board. Um, they does get into some of the legalities, but it's really going to depend on the separate business. Thank you for your question. Also, Nicole, why did you choose to do accounting for childcare? I did not choose to do accounting for childcare. <laughs> um, I choose, I, I choose to not, I did not choose to do that. It actually chose me. Um, some family members and some friends were in childcare. I was actually doing accounting in another industry in healthcare and education. They ran into some trouble, they needed some help. So I had to research to find out how to help them. And my research in, in helping them, a friend told a friend told a friend, and the next thing you know, people just started calling me the daycare tax lady. And then I met with a coach and I knew I was ready to take my business full time. And one of the exercises was to list all the people that I worked with and what I liked most about them and then the further exercise was to see what they all had in common. And every single one of my favorite people worked in the childcare space. So I always say, I didn't choose it, it chose me. So, so I think I've covered all of your questions today. Oh, I, I have a whole nother screen. <laughs> um, so Shannon has questions about the 12,000 including you will be doing your own books. You will be receiving the instructions. You will be doing them and then you will have a quarterly review. In our weekly meetings, we will be going over what's happening um, you, if you choose to come to the weekly meetings. There'll also be a monthly instructional lesson where you'll be learning something. So if you, so bookkeeping is something separate if you decided that you wanted that as well. But if you were in the course, you would be able to do it yourself if you were in, if you were a part of the program. Nicole, this is a 12 month, it is a one-time payment for a 12 month membership into the academy. It's your tuition for a year, basically. So I'm scrolling up. And if I missed your academy questions, forgive me, I have a lot of them in the box.
Okay, I think I may have hit them all. So I'm gonna go back to the bottom. Um, yes, it is a one-time payment because it's open for founders only. So anyone that gets in, um, they are in for the full year. And if we update any of the tools we use, we will share it with our founders after their year is up. If it's updated after their one year, you have 12 months of access. The monthly trainings is a group training. It's a group cohort atmosphere. Your one-on-one -on -one sessions are four times during the year. They do not have to be quarterly. In fact, the first group meeting will occur in February. I mean, the first one-on-one -on -one meeting will occur in February. And then it would be ideal to do it three months after that. The goal is to take you through a full year course of business. So your quarterlies come due, your estimated tax payments go through. You have to get ready to file your tax return. So you will be ready. You will have tax ready financials to hand over to your tax person. If that tax person is us, that's great. If you decide to go to a different tax person, everything will be in order for you to be able to get your taxes filed. You'll be able to do yourself. But this is a one-time payment that you make that will actually equip you for years to come. So if you think about it, it's only paying $1,000 a month that will give you an ROI for years to come. So it is a one-time payment um, for 12 months. And you also get access to the Mastermind Support Group. So any questions that anyone else has, you also benefit from learning from their questions. So if your business isn't at a certain level yet to have a certain need or a concern, you will learn about that certain need or concern so that when you get to that level, you will have already learned information about that level and how to handle it. We will be teaching how to reconcile accounts, how to budget. We will be teaching... Um, First of all, we start from the beginning. We start from the beginning, what is accounting? And if you haven't gotten a sense for how I think and how I teach is similar to this, you will learn what accounting is, what a chart of account is, what the difference between a profit and loss and a balance sheet is, why you need them. You will learn how to reconcile said accounts. You will also learn how to review your financials, how to update your budgets and your projections. And while we're going through it, we'll also talk about the tax ramifications on if you treat one thing this way and if you treat um, a, the same transaction a different way. So yes, you will learn how to reconcile your accounts. So you will be able to create the business financials that you need, be in compliance with the IRS and be ready for income tax season. And you get the support of my team. My team is actually going to support. Um, my team is actually going to support the program. Yes, yes. How could I not mention telling y'all, Shannon? Is it deductible? Absolutely. The course of the program is deductible because it is an expense. It is training for your com for your company. What if numbers is not my thing? Will this be comfortable for me? If numbers is not your thing, you are the reason why we designed this. You see, we meet a lot of business owners that want to work with an accountant and they want to have accounting, but they want to be involved and they want to be hands-on. Maybe things didn't go the way they wanted them to go before. Maybe they tried it and it didn't work out so smooth and they still want that hands-on. So because they still want their hands-on access, they can learn to do it themselves. And we can teach them to do it themselves in a way that is responsible um, and in a way that is also tax deductible. I didn't mention that. That is tax deductible so that they can learn everything that they need, what they can deduct. So if it is not comfortable for you, that's why we didn't want to do. And we toyed, this, uh, we toyed with this idea for um, a couple of months we've been thinking this through. And we originally were thinking of making it an eight week or a 12 week program, but I considered the people who numbers are not for them. They don't like numbers, they're not comfortable. They may need to move a little bit slower. So that's why it's spread out over a year. So um, trainers will be held on Saturdays. It will be held on Saturday mornings 
So far, it's the second Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. Eastern. They will be recorded. Um, the Tuesday sessions will be at 6 p.m. Eastern. They will be at 6 p.m. Eastern. And um, sometimes for training, we may do something a little bit different, but we're gonna go through the beginning. So we're gonna start from the beginning and we're gonna treat everybody as if they have never used QuickBooks Online before. We are only supporting QuickBooks Online at this time. Our trainings and our one-on-one -on -one sessions will be recorded so that you, they will be uploaded into a private portal for you, your one-on-ones, so that you can go back. All of the meetings will be hosted in Kajabi. Most of you are probably already familiar with Kajabi. So all of the trainings will be housed there so that you can go back and you can watch the trainers and you have access to them for the duration of the program. As long as you're um, in school, you'll have access to the school library. <laughs> okay, great, y'all love Kajabi, yeah. So everything will be hosted in Kajabi. Anyone that signs up tonight, our first meeting will happen in January. That's when our first meeting will be. And then you'll be receiving access. You will not receive the access tonight. We're actually still building it. You'll probably get your first access um, next week. No, it's a one-year program, Shannon. So within one year, you should not need the program. You will still have your private meetings. Our system, we are using QuickBooks Online, Ms. Gloria. So we are not using QuickBooks Desktop but because that's being phased away. But if anyone wants to use QuickBooks, if anyone is on QuickBooks desktop and they would like to upgrade to QuickBooks Online, you can upload. Thanks, Alyssa. She, our first meeting is Tuesday, January the 4th. So when we come back from holiday, our first meeting will be Tuesday night, January the 4th. And that will be our orientation. So, do we have any other questions? I want to make sure I get you guys all the information you need. So we are not going to keep um, we are not going to keep the cart open long because it is not our goal to get the most people. Instead, it is our goal to get the most serious people, the fast action takers that really want to be a part of the academy. And the academy will open next year. So we're only taking a few spaces intentionally because we want to make sure our students get all the attention and time that they need. Okay, so I thank you all once again for joining. You will all get a copy of the replay. Should you want to watch the replay, it will be live for 48 hours. I thank you so much for your time and your attention. We have posted the link. Yes, we are taking credit cards. It's all on the order page. So um, this isn't a situation where you have to call us to sign up. Everything is automated. And um, anybody that wants to sign up can sign up on the order page while it's still open. I appreciate you all. Y'all stay safe, stay blessed, and continue to know your numbers, to grow your numbers. Me, Shanita Jones, your child care CPA. I thank you so much. Bye-bye.